process of, of healing and, uh, and finding safety. So that could be everything from tires, when tires get slashed, right, by the, by the folks who are trying to enforce keeping a woman in, in prostitution, um, uh, tires that are slashed by a batter. It could include things like therapy services and legal services. It could include changing locks on doors. And so men taking responsibility for some of that harm that's been caused by the sexually exploitative environment that we have. And, uh, and gathering those resources and those, and those materials that are, are needed in order to repair the harm. Um, again, with this, all of, the, um, all of the resources that are needed, all the materials that would be utilized in partnership with an advocacy program are available online. There's a whole kind of infrastructure set up in order to make this thing happen. All that we need are some really committed men who are going to uh, take some leadership in making this thing happen. Um, and I know, you know, Chuck, through our work with the Minnesota Men's Action Network, we've got some experience already doing this with, with, with programs. Um, and so finally here, you know, uh, we're reaching the end of our time. I can see the MC moving forward. Um, and so we really want to encourage you to, to get involved, um, first of all, by supporting organizations that are addressing trafficking, um, but also specifically um, taking some ind individual responsibility for um, ending the demand for trafficking in this community. Um, so we like to say that men have a really unique opportunity and responsibility to take, uh, to take some action towards these issues. And right here and right now is the beginning of something. Because we had a small group of folks who organized this event that kind of coined themselves the Men Against Trafficking Committee. Um, but what we want is a much bigger group of men who are willing to put time and effort into changing the environment and the conditions um, where this trafficking thrives. And so this group is gonna be meeting um, uh, in the near future, setting up another time to meet. We'll have time for more conversation, and we're gonna have time to look specifically at some of these, uh, these strategies and other strategies that, uh, that will uh, dovetail nicely with what the advocacy organizations are doing in this community to help prevent trafficking. I think that's it, right, Chuck? Well, um... So, um, I want to do one thing. I've been in this room many a time, and if you're in the back, it's really hard to hear what people are saying. I just want to thank Mike Solon, who put up the sound system for this, because it really is making a difference. Thanks a lot. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> so, uh, the last piece we want to do is have Jason Metza from the Northeast Minnesota Labor Council just make a few comments about why is labor here? What is it that's happening? that brings them to the table and all the people they work with. Well, yeah, we must be having somebody else too. Yeah, our uh, Northeast Area Labor Council, President Allen, that one's got a short uh, announcement after this. But uh, we're fortunate to have a boss like Allen. Uh, we get to go to work every day, Zach and I. And if Zach, if you could raise your hand back there. This is uh, our representative from Duluth here who put together tonight's event and has taken initiative uh, to bring this in. But, but one of the great things about working with a labor organization is we've got our, you, I'm sure you see us on TV, we're working politics, we're working on contracts, and you know, in general, hopefully uh, you perceive, we're trying to make people's lives better. And we've got a boss and an organization that's basically given us free reign to reach out to other community groups that you know we see don't necessarily fit a United Way platform, don't necessarily fit into any kind of box. And this is one example that Zach picked out of something uh, that I learned about uh, over the last five, six years with the trafficking. And actually, my first experience was down in Mexico. My buddy and I went down there to Tijuana. I must have been 18. And we ended up going right back across the border, he's got a younger sister who's about 15 at the time. We saw girls her age down there uh, soliciting us while we were trying to go get you know, cheap Mexican beer, maybe go to a strip club. 
And it just put that, you know, this really happens. And, you know, I think especially when we're here in a first world country and have all the, uh, you know, TV out there and stuff, we aren't living the same lives that some of these kids who are coming from uh, poor countries without the laws and regulations that we have are. Um, but again, thank you, Zach. Thank you, Alan. One thing I did want to mention is this year in the legislature, we were able to get a few dollars in, uh, not near the request that was put in for the trafficking, uh, but the Safe Harbors Act, of which I'm sure Representative Huntley uh, was working real hard with us on, and it came out of the Housing Committee through Karen Clark. So we were able to put actually 2.8 million into the funding, of which 2 million goes directly towards uh, younger people with the issues. And so we're proud of that work. It's the tip of the iceberg, but I think in combination with the group here, and if you uh, will commit to volunteering and helping with any of the number of things here, what I will commit to do as a lawmaker, which is my other hat uh, down at the Capitol, is I will work with our other local legislators here, introduce the legislation, we'll try to pass the things that will make lives better for the kids in Minnesota right now and around the country that are coming through our ports and going out to different parts of the um, U.S. and I'm sure Canada too. So thank you with that and thank you Alan, thank you for everyone for coming and all of our speakers and presentations. Thanks Jason. I just wanted to, to say briefly that uh, some of you haven't been in this hall before so I wanted to welcome you to Wellstone Hall. Uh, you know, we in the labor movement believe that there's, there's dignity in all work. And Paul and Sheila Wellstone worked uh, very hard to portray the idea that there's dignity in all people. And that uh, this kind of concept of trafficking uh, means that people have less value and can be disposed of. And so we don't believe that. We're in a hall to promote the idea that we can uh, make changes and we're welcoming uh, you and we are happy to be a part of that. So thank you. part of uh, Chuck and Ed's presentation, you began to see some of the things that you can do. And, and some of them are very simple. They're individual things you can do any day um, that you can do. Uh, to tell a story on Alan, when Menace Peacemakers first started, we were trying to figure out ways in which to intersect and help women who were struggling in domestic violence situations. And we started a group that moved women. When the shelter called us, we would respond, and we would uh, we had uh, people with trucks, and they would show up and move the women out of uh, their homes and into new places. Now, the power of that for the women was really great because oftentimes it was really difficult to find a way to move them, but it was equally powerful for all the men who were involved to see the actual effects on these women, their children, what was happening to them. It was a simple little thing that we were doing when we started that made a difference. So these things that you have seen are the kind of things from the very simple to the much more complicated, getting two and a half million dollars for uh, trafficking and doing something about it in the legislature is a big thing. Um, having the county board, which Pete Stauber and I both sit on, do something um, is another um, possibility. I'd like to see a, um, a, a show of hands of the men in the room who would be willing to do something. So as you leave, one of the things we want you to do is check in. There are a bunch of people here at the desk. There's all kinds of information about things you could do, from the mending project to the policy um, to actually giving your support to women's organizations in this community who need that support. There are things you can do, and we'd like you to get the information and even sign up to do something specific. And so Mountain Peacemaker staff and others are here to do that and respond um, to questions you might have. I think with that, I'm really going to thank you for coming. And I want to thank all the people who put it together and made it happen. 
from the labor unions to the people from um, the organizations who spoke. Thank you all.